Hey guys, I know I just posted the other day, or depending on when I post this video, because it's in the past for me, not for you guys. Um, depending on when I post this video, I post another video today, if that makes sense. Um, so today I've been really excited to do this video. Um, I'm actually going to be reviewing some books I've been reading. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do that. So, before we start, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Yeah, I just tried to do what Kawaii Toy Collector did if you watched that video. Oh, yeah. Okay, on with the video. Wait, before I start. I'm going to do the hashtag Taco Twins at the end of the video. So, yeah. On with the video. Another favorite of mine, whenever I don't think I have any other books to read, I always take this one out because it's that good. And this is from the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. Yeah, Frankweiler. Um, it's a really long title. It's by E.L. Connorsberg. E.L. Connorsberg. And so this is a really great book. It's about this girl named Claudia and her brother Jamie who run away from their boring little small town where everything is the same every day, which I think is something that we all have. We all get into a pattern and sometimes you just need to break it up. So that's kind of what the book is about, finding something different. It's, um, E.L. Connorsberg's um, writing is very relatable. Like, you, the dialogue in this book for where the children are speaking is how I would speak, I think. Like, Claudia, the older sister, always corrects everybody. Jamie always has punctuation and, like, how he says stuff is wrong. It's, it's, um... I think anybody who, well, anybody will enjoy this book if they have, if they're good at relating, if they're good at relating. Yeah, um, I'd say this book is maybe for fifth to ninth grade, maybe a little easy for ninth grade, but you know, it's still a really good book just to read. Um, so I'd say this book is nine out of ten stars it's it's a really good book so i really suggest that you read it i'm sure you can get at your local library or at a bookstore or you might already have it who knows okay um our next book i think a lot of you are gonna like especially because it's a bit less serious than the other books that i've shown and it is hilarious like uppercase Super capital H I'm weird. Okay, anyway, um, maybe some of you have read this. It's The Last Kids on Earth. It's by Max Braulier, Braulier, I don't know. And these illustrated by Douglas Holgate. Douglas Holgate, you are an amazing drawer, illustrator, artist person anyway um so yeah this book is basically um so basically these zombies take over this kid's town and he's living in a tree house off of um hot dog water sugar and um candy that's the life right except zombies are trying to attack him and these weird monsters so yeah um this book is it's really cool they have like this um part they have like a thing where they describe like the monsters here i'll show you or no this is actually the main character jack sullivan hilarious right I'm sure a lot of you will relate to this book because it's about one of, 
it's about this kid who's like really awkward and he tries to be cool and yeah a lot of you i'm not saying a lot of you are like that i'm just saying a lot of people are like that um anyway i didn't say anything um i think that this book is probably good for like anywhere from second grade to seventh grade eighth grade i don't know hmm. i love how uh max Brawley. okay i'm just gonna say max um i love how max writes because it's a lot like a kid was writing it not like bad kid spelling or anything it's just like how he narrates it because it's in jack um it's like first person as jack sullivan it's like 42 days ago, I was regular Jack Sullivan, 13-year-old, living an uneventful life in the uninteresting town of Wakefield. See, I'm not actually Jack Sullivan. It's just how the book is written. Uh, yeah, first person. I bet, I bet you guys learned about that in, like, fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to give this book 7 out of 10 stars because I feel like they could have gone a little deeper with some of the other characters in this book but all in all it's an awesome book um so our next book um i know a lot of my personal close friends have read i'm looking at you um well it depends who you are by the way i saw you guys looking at my green there he's a soccer person i don't know okay Onto the book review, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I found two good books that I really wanted to review. So first, um, I'm gonna review this book. The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. This is a very popular book. Um, it's very deep, it's about this talking well, he's not talking. He talks in the book. It's about this um, this gorilla who lives in this weird mall, zoo, circus thing. It's like, it's kind of messed up because this gorilla, Ivan, was taken when he was young. His home was being destroyed by um, people in the lumber industry which is a lot what's happening now. So I was very um, touched by it because you know, some of you know that I'm um, very concerned about our uh, earth right now with all the CO2 in the air, global warming, all of that, bada bing. Um, and so this kind of made me think about that. Sorry, I just hit the table. Um, with the lumber and his environment being cut down. And so it was really sad. Um, but like the thing is that he's he was kind of like raised as a human but um when this elephant named ruby arrived this young elephant the same thing happened to her um everything changes like it's i don't want to spoil the book so i'm not going to say anything else but the way that uh miss Catherine applegate was Catherine Applegate um right it's really interesting because it's kind of like almost a diary in a way but um it's really deep like am I a human am I a gorilla well obviously he's a gorilla because you know he's a gorilla just look at him but um yeah so I just love her writing and it's a really cool book. It's really cute. It's, um, I suggest it basically the opposite of the people that I just suggested the last kids on earth, the last kids on earth do. I mean, sure. I'm sure that there are people in this world who like both of these books like me, but I think it takes a different sense of what type of books you like to read for you to like this. It's a bit different than the last kids on earth. So I'm gonna rate this book seven out of 10, cause I think it's a really good book, but I don't know, it's, like I said earlier about Harry Potter, I get it if you read the whole book, all the, ser the whole series, and you just thought this isn't for me. Like, 
the one and only Ivan, Ivan, I don't know Russian, um, is really good. I just, it isn't the best book for me. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure a lot of you will like it if you read it. So I'm just suggesting it. Okay, next up is The Metropolitans. This is, oh, it kind of has to do with like, um, Miss, the mixed up files of Miss Beasley, Frank Wilde. Um, um, they go, it's a part, part of it said New York and part of this is said New York, you know, New York, New York. Oh, that's the city they're in. Okay, anyway, um, this is, I really like this book because it kind of brought some history into it. Uh, King Arthur, the Four Knights, it's, it brings four unlikely people together. Like, um, and it's set in, uh, World War II, yeah, World War II, and so these Nazi spies are, like, trying to steal this really powerful book, and, um, it's like, can these four kids, reincarnations of, I'm not spoiling it. Um, can they stop World War II? Well, obviously they didn't because it still happened. Genocide, everything. But, um, um, so yeah, this is a cool book. It's by Carol Goodman. Doesn't that sound like an old name, like Carol Goodman? Is she Benny Good... Oh, Benny Goodman, you know, the clarinet player, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But, um, Benny Goodman's wife? He would be, she would be kind of old. No, she doesn't. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is an awesome book. I really like her writing because it's kind of set in four parts. Like, one is, well, they're all first person, but for example, like, since there's four characters, Madge, Joe, Kiko, and Walt, um, one part would be from Madge's eyes, one part would be from Joe's eyes, one part would be from Kiku's eyes, and the other would be from Walt's eyes. So, it's an awesome book. I I think I'll rate this um, 8 out of 10 because I really like how they brought some history into it. She brought some history into it and I think it's a great book all around. So, yeah. And um, if this gets, uh, I don't, I doubt it will, but if this gets like 50 views, let's say 50. 50 to 60 reviews I will do another video like this with some other books I've been reading um, and so now our taco twins our taco twins are um, wait let me check my phone Our taco twin ships go out to Jaden Carey. She's our first. Let history honor her as the first taco twin ever. She's the oldest now. It's like you have a twin brother, sister, and you're like, I'm a minute older than you, or they're like, I'm a minute older than you, and then you, that's held against you or towards you for the rest of your life. Yeah, right. Um. Anyway, so... I lost my train of thought. Oh, Taco Twins, right. Okay, so Jade and Carrie is first, and then our goes out to... Um, Daisy Joaquin, I think that's how you pronounce her name, right? Daisy Joaquin. So it's Jade and Carrie. Um, and... She's right, I should do challenges. Have you guys ever seen the channel It's Just Nick? Well, he did this thing where he tried to get people to subscribe with their noses. So that's what, or like, actually like with your noses. So that's what I'm gonna try to do. Here, let me show you. Is it possible? No, okay. Stop going into full screen.